Hi, everyone. Welcome. Good morning. Happy Saturday. I'm Jacqueline Tacarante from JMT Media, and I am here with my amazing cup of coffee because we have a lot to chat about. Um, so I'm going to bring on my two friends because this kind of morning live chat, I'm going to try to keep it about 15, 20 minutes maximum because I know everyone has a busy day from dropping off kids to karate to track. Lots of things are happening this morning. And so I just wanted to have a conversation, you know, open dialogue. One of the things that I love about Staten Island and being in business is when there's new technology, new innovations, I love making sure that all of my friends know what's going on. And so if you're tuning in to JMT Media or you're tuning in to Canvas Institute or you're on Vince McDermott's page or Jacqueline Tacarante's page, um, we hope that you walk away with some gems of upcoming art exhibits that are happening along with some new innovative technology that's coming to Staten Island. This is like a first. This is the first time. So it's a pretty, pretty huge deal. Um, so first to start off, I want to bring in two of my dear friends. Um, first is Vince McDermott, the artist, and also the Honorable Bobby Digi, who happens to also be a serial entrepreneur, a community advocate, and really a huge trailblazer. So I'm going to bring in my, my gentlemen's. Vince, <laughs> Bobby, are you there? Good morning, Jack. Hey, Jack. You're looking great. What's up, Bobby D? Hey, Vince, how are you, brother? <laughs> good good morning, you. good morning. First off, thank you so much. Um, I know that y'all are busy gentlemen, and so I want to first um, start out by talking a little bit about Vince um, because he has a pretty robust um, bio and information. So this instrument is a Island-based artist. He just returned from showing in the 2021 Florence Biennial Eternal Feminine. He is the son of the prolific composer Galt McDermott, who wrote the music for the acclaimed and award-winning Broadway show Hair, and whose beats have been sampled by Run DMC, Busta Rhymes, and Nas. Um, I want to also briefly, just briefly go into this. Um, the piece, the three pieces that he exhibited were called Reclining Woman, Dancing Woman with Big Hair, and Rain Lover, which is um, the artwork that we've been using to promote the upcoming December 18th show. They were all part of the Florence Biennial exhibit. His work has also been seen at the Oculus at the World Trade Center, and his work has been published in Art Folio in 2021, a curated collection of the world's most exciting artists and Capsule's 2020 Curatorial Leaders in Contemporary Art, Volume 2. His style focuses on an articulate figure, drama, or protagonist in precisely established bright white and bright red colors from Michael Frizzola, a quote from him, um, who is an amazing um, artist, writer, reviewer from the Staten Island Advance, among other publications. And so his new exhibit called Under the Umbrella contains eight new paintings in the continuing Big Red New York City series. The paintings describe the current changes of American life, as well as comforting continuance of America's love of cars. <laughs> I love it. Um, you have a few pieces right behind you, which we're gonna, we're gonna get into. Um, but Bobby Digi, um, who's here with us as well, thank you, because I know you're a busy man. Bobby Digi is not only a serial entrepreneur, uh, but he also is the CEO and executive director for Canvas Institute, which was the Staten Island's first community think tank for artists that celebrate cultural diversity and talent in one place. Um, Canvas Institute invites locals and visitors to exchange in cultural exchanges, art creation, indie film screenings, television, radio programming, and multimedia classes. Canvas Institute is dedicated to the mission of engaging community members and organizations to utilize the space as an incubator for new ideas, programs, and opportunities to improve the local and global community. And to be very honest, uh, Bobby Digi was also a supporter and influencer 
for the New York City Digital Media Center, which was launched a few weeks back. Um, so I know, look, y'all have pages and pages of stuff. So <laughs> we're going to get into it because I think y'all are, y'all have always been on the leading and cutting edge of technology, but also innovation for artists within the community. So Bobby, I want to start off with talking to you about Canvas Institute and really the purpose of Canvas and also some of the artists that have come through because one of the artists was actually in a, uh, the correct me if I'm wrong, in one of Beyonce's um videos that she created and so can you talk a little bit about kind of curating the curator <laughs> oh exactly it's always a pleasure you know interacting with you and you know that you're my sister I love you so much uh thank you for again affording us your platform uh to amplify the good work that we do and also showcasing vince mcdermott canvas institute um is a passion of mine it's a creative space. Um, it's a community space, a safe space on Staten Island in the North Shore, uh, downtown Staten Island. Uh, and it's a brainchild of mine. I created about uh, seven years ago. I'm always, I'm often reminded. Um, we've had the opportunity to really improve and, and have positive impact on over 8,000 people in the time that we've been open, uh, locally, globally, from the folks that we've seen. Um, I personally love art. Uh, I collect art. Um, and oftentimes I produce arts in different forms. Um, I always like to pursue my, my passion. And I find that, you know, the universe often connects me with people in time and spaces. So one of the reasons why I celebrated the, the opening of Canvas Institute is actually because I met Laolu Sebanjo who was the Odyssey we were referencing earlier, who ironically just yesterday had his piece au auctioned. It's on auction at Sothersby. So if you know Sothersby, uh, you know that that's, you know, if, you, if your, your piece is being auctioned at Sothersby, it means you've made it as an artist. Um, and yes, he, uh, his first exhibit was at Canvas Institute um, in 2017, I believe. I can't remember at this point. Um, and CNN came, covered it. Uh, Laulu is like a brother to me. He is a brother to me. He's gone and really blossomed as an artist. Um, and then, you know, we really began to take seriously curating art at Canvas Institute. And uh, my dear friend, who we are spotlighting today, Vince McDermott, um, I love his work. I love him as an individual. Um, remarkable human being, his artwork, you can feel the energy in it. And we collaborated years ago and did his first exhibit uh, at Canvas Institute. Uh, it was called Nine Works. And we actually sold uh, pretty much everything the same night, just a, a testament of the quality and just uh, the show, the product. Um, and this is our second, I believe, third effort. Um, at that, we were just together in Italy. And um, so Canvas, is, Canvas Institute is a space where artists, emerging artists can really get an opportunity um, to, to, to test the water uh, with their artwork, with community. And, and more importantly now, uh, Vince and I are, you know, we, we jumped into the, and I don't know if I should go into it now, but into the NFT world um, as that is exploding and it's a place for artists. So in line with Canvas Institute, what we've always done being innovators in the community, um, we are bringing NFTs via Vince McDermott's work to Staten Island, New York. I love it. I love it. We're, we'll hold on on the NFT conversation <laughs> uh, because we got a, a lot of folks um, that are watching and tuning in. So Vince, can you talk a little bit about your work as an artist, because I was able to meet you a few years back when I had just had my son Roman, and it was the nine pieces of red artwork. I had never seen so many people dressed in red. It was so sold out. There were literally hundreds of people outside of the space. Um, it was just a really interesting, cool vibe and scene. And it reminded me of when I lived in Austin, Texas. 
Um, but it was really because of your work, um, your design aesthetic, your um, figures that you select. So can you talk a little bit about your work itself and how it's evolved? <laughs> yeah. Hi, you guys. Um, I was told long, long ago when I was a student to work big because big gets attention and small doesn't really get attention. So I just decided five foot by seven foot. I like those numbers. And I decided to keep it simple. My focus on painting was to tell a story, which my father, as you had mentioned him, he, he was a composer. He says every piece of art has to tell a story. So I wanted to tell a story with, you know, simplify it, just red and white, which has enough contrast to, to, to have impact. And just um, work on the geometry, you know, the, the simplicity of an idea. I feel, honestly, in, in our culture that we're bombarded visually with uh, really sophisticated stuff, advertising, social media, and so on and so forth. But the purpose of a painting, you know, I'm, Bobby D and I believe in art. So the effect of a painting on a wall is it affects the room, you know, and you want it to be a positive, I want it to be a positive effect. I could use black and white, and that's dramatic, or gray and white, whatever. But I choose red and white. Red is the color of love, and life, energy, you know? So that's the format that I use. And then an artist is meant to critique, or at least not, forget critique, observe community, you know? And um, we've had COVID and we have technology changes. So I have two paintings about that. But the overall theme, under the umbrella, really the most popular picture in this in the show is Rain Lover. It's a little girl under a heavy rain under an umbrella, protecting her, keeping her dry. And there's a metaphor there. I, I believe in God. I believe that God protects us. And that little girl, if she were timid, she'd be in the house looking at the rainstorm outside. But she's not timid. None of my friends and none of the people around me are timid. We're out in the storm, but we are protected. And it's not just God, but it's, I, I feel it's Staten Island, you know, the people on Staten Island. And, um, you know, my father chose Staten Island. He could have lived anywhere, but there was the right sort of feeling of community or affection. I don't even know how to say it, where he was free to do what he did in the world and, and feel that he, when he came back to Staten Island, he was coming home. So, that's a big part of it. You know, Bobby D is a big part of the community. And I'm glad he took a shot on me a couple of years ago. You know, it's fine to just paint, but he said, you want to do a show? Well, if you do a show, <laughs> you're on stage, you know? So one thing led to another and here we are, but um, it's been a very good that. friendship and a very good collaboration. I love it. I love it. And as we're talking about community and digital, what I want to do is I want to actually share the screen here. Um, so for those of you that are tuning in, this video, um, this live stream is also going to be turned into a podcast. Um, so you won't be able to see it because you'll be listening. But for those of you that are tuning in to Facebook this morning, if you actually go to Vince McDermott's website, um, right on his homepage, he has his exciting series called Big Red NYC. And many of these pieces have been sold, um, but then there's the new pieces, which is part of the new exhibition. Um, so this one in particular is called Rain Lover, um, which is what we were discussing. And this is such a beautiful um, piece. I find it very tranquil and calm. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing this live. But um, as we're talking about, you know, community and we're talking about outreach efforts when and I want to have a full disclosure. Um, I can't speak for the rest of you, but I can speak for myself. I am not an NFT aficionado. I am not a NFT certified um, currency, currency. However, I am a certified marketing message to get things out there. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to get as much information as we can. Um, actually, before we do, there's a couple of comments that we have from folks 
Um, Mike Bloomfield from Techie Geek, he said, hi, everyone. Great topic. Hoping that Vince can sell an NFT for $69 million as well. I mean, honey, that's where we're going with this, right? So thank you. From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> that's right. Mike Bloomfield from Techie Geek, great guy. Um, we also have a message from Pamela Adamo, who is this fearless uh, development director over at the Staten Island Museum. She said, thank you, Bobby Digi, for your help with Wagner High School student body. Thank you for your support. Awesome, awesome. Wonderful, wonderful. And then we also have Vinny. Uh, wait until you see his shirt. I know, I'm super pumped. I'm super pumped about that. And so as we're talking about merchandise, I want to switch gears to talk about NFTs um, because, you know, and I want to make this into a layman's terms. I always tell people, what's your 30 second pitch about anything from business, your press, your process, service, your product. And so for me, the 30 second pitch for NFTs is a digital crypto currency of a form where you get the original copy and it really helps protect an artist. Um, to not only maintain the integrity of it, of the artwork, but also to be able to have royalties, et cetera, because for years we have seen this happen in the music industry. And so now it has converted into people creating their own record labels, creating their own way of distributing um, their form of art with music. So in this case, it's a form of art, uh, digital art. And so... Bobby or Vince, is there anything that you really want to talk about the NFTs? Because for me, you guys bringing this to Staten Island, that is huge. This is the first exhibit here on Staten Island that will showcase an, a local artist, but also the first NFT. This is a first show with the NFT, even as an option. So Vince or Bobby, if you want to talk about that, because just that alone, it blows my mind away. Bobby D, say something. You, got something. <laughs> um, you know, uh, thank you, Jacqueline. And I mean, you know, yeah, we're not all experts yet on um, uh, this uh, uh, new way of, you know, selling arts and really making arts available. But I will say this. Um, it was it's just like when the Internet was uh, a thing that uh, barely anyone knew about. Uh, many of us had to take a risk to dive in and figure out what it is and look at how it's revolutionized the world today, good or bad, right? So with, um, and, and, and someone who had been in the record label, I mean, record industry many years ago, there was one of the reasons I left the music industry, I took some time off, was because I, I really was against um, the, the way that industry was ripping artists off and musicians with masters um, and so on and so forth. I always allowed my artists to do whatever they wanted. In the same way with these, with this NFTs, it gives the uh, creators and the artists equity in uh, their work. You know, it allows them to control the ownership and the masters. And I think that that's the way the world should go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, part of what I said to Vince earlier is like, guy, we got to get involved with this NFT thing. And, you know, he connected uh, with with uh, the creators of NFTs and we are learning our way through it. Yeah. But I will say this. NFTs are um, uh, on 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 blockchain. Uh, it gives the artists the ability to retain ownership of their work and actually also collect uh, uh, a form of royalties uh, through the work. You can track um, the sales of the work. You can also uh, exchange the work. So it's a whole new medium that's allowing for the business to expand beyond physicality. So it's a digital space that allows you to uh, have digital ownership. And you know, everyone's talking about the metaverse, whether you hate or love it. Uh, it is a space now where there, there are people are actually buying real estate. And I've heard recently there's about a hundred million dollars worth of transaction in the metaverse. So in the metaverse, NFTs will be, um, you know, uh, uh, um, assets that you can actually utilize. And when you have your real estate or your property that you can actually have your uh, digital art 
hanging on the wall. So I'll turn over to uh, – so we want to bring this to Staten Island because we want Staten Island to keep up and stay up with what's happening globally and locally. And we want to make it fun. And the best way to do it is to include it in this exhibit, which is December 18th with Vince McDermott. So it's going to be fun. Um, and we're opening it up to the world. Vince, over to you. Yeah, the, the in order to be successful in anything, you have to be aware of what's happening around you. What's happening around us, the next generation, our kids, you know, they're into what we found new. To them, that's taken for granted, mm -hmm. digital worlds and so on and so forth. So when the reality, you know, NFT, non-fungible uh, token, it can be applied to anything, to music, art, a speech, you know, and it's a form of currency that these younger people are familiar with and comfortable with. Sure. So some of them, you know, just want the digital ownership. They're not even interested in, in the physical art. You know, I've tied the physical art to the NFT because that's what I believe in. You know, I'm an analog guy. So, um, you know, part of the story is it's just to keep up with with what's happening. You know, there's an audience that operates in this world of thinking that is, they are the future. So we have to participate and that's how we're doing it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, one of the things that I think it's important is as we're wrapping up and posting links, um, you know, the first thing that people say is, where do we go? What do we do? How do we even sign up for NFTs? And even for myself, um, this week alone, I signed up for my first NFT um, and signed up, created an account through, and I'm going to share my screen here. This is called OpenSea. So OpenSea um, is like your online, almost like your eBay store, but it's um, the platform for various, whether it's digital art, uh, what the items are, you can buy it, auction, et cetera. And so I'm actually on the Vince McDermott site, um, seeing as we're talking about your upcoming December 18th show. And so... These are um, your beautiful pieces of work that are for sale right now. Um, and so we'll make sure that we put the information down below. But one of the things that we discussed even early on before we started talking about um, doing this morning segment is really doing your research about NFTs and also what, you, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to buy it? Do you want to sell it? Do you want to save it? Do you want to just keep it in your digital wallet? And so I want to put this out here um, and we'll put the link so folks can, can take a look down below. But as you can see, there's tons and tons of pieces um, that we have here for you to take a look at um, under Vince McDermott's name. So I'm going to stop sharing that. Um, we got a few more messages that are coming through. Um, of course, uh, my mother. Good morning, y'all. <laughs> I got, always got to share my mom. Biggest, biggest fan supporter. Everyone says, how did you do what you're doing? I'm like, because of my mother. She didn't give up on me. Um, Niles French from SIEDC. He's telling us good morning. Good morning, Niles. We love you. Love What's you. What's up, Niles? My homie. That's right. That's right. So what we're going to do um, to wrap up, because I want to keep this tight because everybody has a, a busy schedule this morning. We're going to post the information down below, um, not only about the December 18th show, but also about the open seat link. Um, so folks can set up their accounts. We encourage you to do your research um, because we are not a financial analyst. Um, and you have to understand the basics of what the NFT means, the currency, and then also what does your wallet mean. So we encourage you to also take a look below. We're going to send some links and post some links. Um, but Vince, the Honorable Bobby Digi, thank you so very much this morning to really talk about this innovative technology that you're bringing to not only to Staten Island, but to the artist community. And so I think that this is huge. Like for those of you it's that a big are deal. It's in, a big deal. And this is a really, really big deal. You know, new administration for New York City. Everyone's talking about it. And it's great to see that Staten Island is not the forgotten borough. Staten Island is forging on technology. And so we're really excited that we're able to bring this little Q&A session. And we'll have more of these talks later. 
For those of you that are tuning in, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Bobby and Vince, if you just give us one second and everyone have a great rest of your weekend. Thanks so much, y'all. Thank you, thank everyone, you. for tuning in.